this kid writing your thumbnail is the future of Mercedes F1 AMG. He is 17 years old, he is Italian, and he shares the name of Ferrari's most recent world champion. Andrea Kimi Antonelli will replace Lewis Hamilton at Mercedes for 2025. Now currently, he will be driving for Prema in the Formula 2 Championship in 2024, having only just departed from Formula from well um, the junior series down in Formula 4 and of course the Renault series. Of course, he will be skipping Formula 3 because Mercedes are so impressed by this kid's progress. They clearly see him as the future. Now, obviously, I would give Antonelli's chances of replacing Lewis Hamilton at Mercedes with a solid 8 out of 10. But of course, there are plenty of other options Mercedes could consider. But there is a reason why I've chosen Antonelli as my number one choice to replace Hamilton. Antonelli is a member of the Mercedes Junior Academy. And... With the way Formula 1 teams like to choose drivers these days, they want long-term options. They do not want short-term options. It's very rare now to see drivers only get signed up for one or two years. Because even a team like Williams wants stability. Hence why Logan Sargent has been given a second year despite his 23 season being incredibly dismal. But stability and continuity is the key. And with new regulations coming up for 2026, getting Antonelli in early doors is could really keep this team on a, on a stable platform. And I am pretty sure, even if Antonelli only finishes as low as third or fourth in the Formula 2 Championship, as long as he wins a few races and shows signs of improvement, I think that's enough good news for Total Wolf and his executives at the Mercedes hierarchy to sign this 17-year-old Italian, by which time, of course, he'll be 18 years old next year, to drive for Mercedes full-time in Formula 1. But now, of course, we have got to get to the other candidates. Starting off with Red Bull, Max Verstappen. It's a 1 out of 10 from me. He signed a new contract at Red Bull until 2028. He's winning pretty much almost everything out of canter at the team. Can't see him coming. Sergio Perez. 3 out of 10. Yeah, to be honest, this guy is not the future. He's going to be 35 years old when he, if he joins Mercedes. And frankly, I don't think anyone particularly good or competitive wants this guy at their team. He's most likely probably going to go to somewhere like Williams. For 25. Ferrari. Charles Leclerc. 2 out of 10. He has signed a multi-year deal. At the Scuderia. Beyond this season. I presume it's going to end in 26 or 27. And. It's pretty likely that. His teammate Carlos Sainz. Is more likely. And I'm going to rate Sainz's chances. At 6 out of 10. He's. Decent, he's articulate, he's good at technical feedback, his race pace is solid, but his qualifying pace is average, and whilst he is a smart guy when it comes to um, his race craft and the strategic side, would he just be there as a stopgap for Kimi Antonelli? It is very possible, and to be honest, he might well be more tempted to go and join Audi, who will be taking over Sauber for 2026. McLaren, Lando Norris, 4 out of 10, Lando seems to be very comfortable at McLaren, he wants to be in a nice safe environment, he did say the other day that he didn't want to join Red Bull because he didn't necessarily want to go up against Max Verstappen, and I don't really see him moving unless uh, Mercedes make him a great offer. Oscar Piastri, 7 out of 10. Now, I will say, if Piastri does join Mercedes, 
I would actually now begin. I would actually start to question the future of George Russell because if Piastri beats Russell, then someone is going to have to make way for Kimi Antonelli. And if Russell loses out to Oscar, I think Russell will be the one who will have to leave Mercedes and find a new drive for 2026. I don't know how, whether Russell, how long Russell's current deal lasts as for, but Piastri versus Russell would be interesting to watch. So I would rate this at least 6 out of 10. But right now, I do think Oscar uh, Piastri does enjoy being a McLaren driver. It depends how well McLaren progresses, but we really have got to keep our eye out of Oscar. Aston Martin, Fernando Alonso, 5 out of 10. Due to his age, he will be 44 years old next year. He's not, he's very much a short term deal. And to be honest, would, the only way Mercedes would want to sign Alonso if they had actually had a championship contending card next year. I'm not sure about that. That really does depend on how well they progress this year. But having said that, who knows what Fernando Alonso wants to really do. He might jump at a chance of driving for Mercedes, but Mercedes have got to think of the long-term future, and frankly, fast-tracking Kimi Antonelli would be a better option than signing Alonso, but who knows? Lance Stroll, 0 out of 10. It's Lance Stroll. I'm not even going to go into... I'm not even going to delve into detail with this guy. Alpine, Pierre Gasly, 4 out of 10. He only just joined Alpine last year. He's been doing well, but he did have a tricky stint at Red Bull where he got kicked out the door after just six months. Only did 12 races at the team, but frankly, he is a bit too inconsistent. And once again, I think you'd be better off fast-tracking Antonelli then bringing in Gasly, who frankly hasn't really showed anything to prove that he might be a better driver than Russell. Esteban Ocon. 7 out of 10? Of course, Esteban Ocon has got um, links to Mercedes. Um, I think um, Total Wolf was once his manager. So I think if Total Wolf was to bring Ocon in, he would get a return on his investment. He would also get an agent's fee, just like he did when he signed up Bottas to drive for Mercedes seven years ago. And but having said that, though, Ogon's performances have been all over the place. He's not quite as impressive as people think he is, but you never know. If he does well this year, he could be at Mercedes for 25. Don't rule it, him out. Um, Williams, Alex Alburn, 6 out of 10. Great season last year. Single-handedly dragged Williams to 7th place in the Constructors' Championship. Despite having a slower car than what Horse had, bizarrely enough, having seen the lap time charts. But, and whilst, of course, Williams do have Mercedes engines, which might make the deal, might, might make the transfer easier to do. What are Williams going to get? Who, who will Williams be able to replace Alex with? I mean, if, if Perez is not available, then it might be a bit harder for Mercedes to lure Albert to their team. And it depends once again. Like, would they want to get rid of, potentially risk their relationship with George Russell just to get Alex Albert in? And where does Antonelli stand in all of this? Because he is a very key factor into whether any of these drivers are, could potentially join Mercedes. Um. Then we get to the drivers who are not currently in F1. Sebastian Vettel. It's a 5 out of 10 from me. He will be spending his second year out on the sidelines. He doesn't seem that bothered about missing Formula 1 anymore. He's been busy building uh, highs for bees and doing whatever the hell he's been wanting to do for a long time since, you know, leaving the sport for a while. I mean, would he be the same driver he was when he left the sport? I'm not sure. It doesn't look very good. 5 out of 10 is probably a bit too generous, but, you know, the name, the four-time champion status, it, it will give 
Mercedes a bit of a balky boost, but you know, and you know, he's a great friendly PR personality and all that, but I think Vettel's time in F1 is done. Mick Schumacher, it's a two out of ten for me. Trash far too many cars at horse, and to be honest, he's now off to sports cars to race for Alpine. He's probably more likely to join Alpine's F1 team if Alcon or Gasly were to leave because he is just far too much of a risk. And frankly, is he is he really quick enough? Is he really consistent enough to drive for a team like Mercedes? I'm I don't think so. So it's got to be a two out of ten. As for the other teams, Alpha Tori, Yuki Sonoda, 3 out of 10. He's, all, he's pretty much bolted his wagon to the Red Bull train. And of course, he is a Honda man for life. So he's more likely to end up joining Aston Martin in 2026 than actually come to Mercedes. So you can really forget about him. Daniel Ricciardo, 2 out of 10. Has been dreadfully off form for the past three years. What I mean, apart from PR purposes, he's not going to get your results at the racetrack unless, of course, he actually improves this season. For is it? No, no, it's not Alpha Tori anymore. It's the Visa All Racing Balls Cash App team. Oh my word! What an atrocious name to call a racing team, by you. I mean, they're, they're out here at rejecting Andretti, and yet they're allowing. The Red Bull B team to give themselves the most atrocious name possible. I mean, do I call them Racing Bulls? Do I call them the Visa Orbi Cash App team? I'm, oh God, I don't even know. I'm just going to call them the, the old Minardi team or Toro Rosso. I don't even care about what they're calling themselves. Of course, Dan Ricardo has sold his soul to the devil, so who cares? He's just there for vibes and banter at this point. Um, Sauber. Um, Valtteri Bottas, I would actually give this guy a 6 out of 10. He's reliable. He's not going to upset the Apple car. He is a good team player. Of, of course, yes, I know he likes to indulge himself by dropping his trousers for nude photo shoots. But, I mean, what could it be? Could it be a one-year deal? You know, allow Kimi Antonelli to do two years of Formula 2 before they promote him. But, would Bottas be up for that? I think he could be, but what 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 would he be able to do after that? Would he go to sports car racing? Would he go to um IndyCar? Who knows it, but really though it depends on what Bottas really wants to do. Joe Grand Yu, one out of ten. Nah, I'm not having it. This guy is just awful. And last but not least, horse. Nico Hulkenberg, four out of ten. Electric over qualifying, but his race pace and general race craft is questionable. And to be honest, he's going to be what? Um, 38 years old next year? No, this, this just isn't a one, to be honest. And frankly, I get the feeling he would only accept an offer to drive the team just for the sake of driving in a top car for a year or two, and then he'll be off to retirement. But you never know, it could happen. It definitely could happen. Don't rule Hulkenberg out. Kevin Magnussen, it's the most solid one out of ten I can think of. The guy has the guy had a terrible 2023. And to be honest, I do kind of think as much as I do like Kevin Magnussen, he did get found out last year. You know, finally up against a decent teammate. And he he is just simply a midfield driver. I'm I'm really sorry. I hate to say it about Kevin Magnussen, but he's just not good enough for a top team. So thank you for watching from Crystal Racing. I'll do all the usual stuff. And please give me a like to give me a boost in the algorithm. And I'll see you next time.